party started. Uh, today's speaker is Kathleen Spear with Coca, and I won't rain on her parade too much, no pun intended, but uh, they had a big win yesterday at the county meeting, and she'll probably touch on that a little bit. <laughs> Thanks so much. Oh, okay. I'm Kathleen Spihar. I am the executive director of the Council on Culture and Arts, which is still in existence. Um, as of this morning, I wasn't sure, as I've told a few of you um, in the room this morning, I wasn't sure, uh, we had a big vote yesterday uh, at a, at a uh, council meeting about whether um, the, uh, the local arts, we're a local arts agency, and whether we would actually stay a local arts agency or if that was going to be shifted um, into a county function and so on and so forth. So there was a unanimous vote that we stay in a um, kind of a, um, for us, a real um, a validation of a you know, five-year contract and a grants program that's going to stay with us. And, and thousands of uh, citizens from around the county that, that came forward and talked to um, commissioners about how important arts, culture, and heritage is to this area. And I think that, you know, I, it's so, you know, I wasn't sure what to say this morning because I said, like, okay, it's going to go one way or another. So what about, you know, how, when I talk about arts and culture, there's going to be some themes here. But, you know, when I talk about locally, what are we going to do together, it would be a very different conversation. Um, but, uh, but I'm just thrilled that um, this area that I've only lived in for six months now, um, and I recognize the assets that are in this community that I'm not sure the community understands and really can, has been embracing as they can. I, I, want, I came here specifically to do good work here with, with all the stakeholders of, and, and, um, and folks in the community that want to really look at you know, arts, culture, heritage and how, how we can continue to elevate that. And so I'm thrilled that COCA is going to be so part of those conversations, that actually we've got five years now to really, and, and that's going to and tie into with the bicentennial of the city and how that's going to end up you know, putting together some good energy. And, and then COCA's um, connection with the business community, which we want to really continue to grow. Can, we can you know, grow and flourish it. So, so that's a little bit about this morning. And, and uh, yeah, we came, um, we came away with a, a 7 0 victory um, from that, that vote. So we're thrilled. And we're also, you know, we, we appreciate, um, uh, always appreciate Visit Tallahassee, and, can, and we'll continue to look at how to, to uh, strengthen that partnership. Um, and do good work together, but but this gives us a really great opportunity to move forward in a different way. So first, yeah, that's yeah there's, there's a lot going on here in the spring, and um, and we we have our kind of our you know me being the executive director of Coca, um, we have you know I have a staff that's that's well seasoned, and we kind of know what comes up. But you know when you also have a very well seasoned staff, it's like well these are the things that we do. It's like yes, but this this community has changed so much. Um, I was here eight, nine years ago, uh, very briefly, working with FSU as a visiting professor. And then I came back in this completely different role, and it's been amazing to see um, what has changed. And business has been, really been pushing that change. And so, you know, when I look at what COCA does, the services, um, the, the events that we uh, connect with, I look at how we can do that differently and how do we need to expand out in order to make sure that we're representing arts, culture, heritage, and also arts, culture, heritage knows where all these opportunities are. And that, that's one of our, our main purposes. Can I ask a quick question real quick? <clears throat> yeah. How do you balance the politics, sports, and culture when there's a like overlapping event sometimes because it's a little crazy I mean, from just in general? Oh, just like how do you choose? Well, no, no, obviously choose culture first. That's what we're here for. But how do you like, it's like determining like how to not overlap them all at that point because there's a lot going on there is a lot going on, and I think when we take a look at who, because we, we generate a lot of content, we write, we write ourselves over 100 articles a year that we just, um, you know, that we distribute amongst all sorts of media outlets and so on, and, and we take a look at are we um, geographically, are we covering all areas? We look at the kinds of, of arts, culture, and heritage events, and are we making sure, you know, the dance and film and, and music, and, you know, no, is there enough representation? Um, so we kind of, we, we cherry pick from that particular point. Um, we also look at, um, are there unique events that are kind of one time and that we need to make sure that we get some additional, um, uh, some additional exposure to? So we kind of, we take a look at, of a holistic way of that. 
And then we also look at um, organizations that have many events coming up and say, okay, they've got six events coming up this spring, but we're not going to be able to do all six, but you know, what are the important ones? And we'll, sometimes we'll reach out to them and say, you know, are there particular events that you need some extra exposure on so that we can try to, to work together with them as a partnership? So it just kind of depends. Um, but we, we do take a look at everything that needs to be done in the, this community and we try to cover as much as possible. Showing up, writing about it, posting about it, Instagram, uh, you know, whatever um, it, it ends up need, being needed. Yeah. Uh, Captain, what's the geographic area? Is it just Leon County that you guys are tasked with? We actually, it's a hundred mile radius, so we focus on the on city of Tallahassee and Leon County. But it, but we go beyond that. So like we've got a part, a really strong partnership that we just started with Panama City. Um, so that's fantastic. And the we're looking at all these the cities that are in outlying areas within this hundred mile radius and saying you know how can we be a main communications conduit with all the um, with everyone that lives there and visits so that we can try to get them into Leon County and, and Tallahassee. In my short time that I've been here, when I've been out talking to people that are visitors too, they a lot of you know we have a lot of visitors that just come in from other counties that you know they're like if they're or they're visiting people that are outside of our county and they're like well this is the place to get th to, do, to do things you know you've got a lot going on here so we want to make sure that everybody understands what um, what's happening here then you know and also to encourage them to come back so that if they're not staying in the downtown area or in the county come back stay in the county you know um, you know get a hotel night here go to restaurants here you know we're, we're looking at how can we be um, a stronger stronger partner in helping package those experiences Hence the connection with Visit Tallahassee. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, and I think that, you know, um, there are artists also that, and businesses, um, creative businesses that live outside of the county um, that are, are amazing. I mean, they, these are folks that, that they're kind of based in, in northern Florida, but then they travel all over the place. I mean, we've got artists <clears throat> here that, you know, do a lot of national and international work, and you never know it because they have very little um, exposure here in, um, in uh, uh, Tallahassee and, and in Leon County. And so that's been a puzzle that I've been kind of trying to, to figure out since I've been here. You know, how can we give um, our artists that have these national and international reputations and are doing this amazing work, how can we give them more exposure here? Uh, because they also, the kind of work that they're doing is really high end. And, and we want to make sure that the brand, our arts brand for, um, for this area is, is very eclectic. And so how can we, you know, we've asked ourselves that at, at COCA, um, looking at how we can do a better job at, at looking at those individuals. And a lot of them are visual artists, but there's also musicians. We're finding some literary artists that are out there. And that might be something that a business community would be really um, interested in, um, in finding out more about. Like, who, are the, who are the artists and who are the creatives that are living around here? And right now we don't have a, a, a way of packaging that. It's really simple to understand, but we're working on that. So uh, I'm going to go ahead. Are there other questions? Just you know, I could say just feel free to, to ask as we go along here. Um, but I thought that you might want to know right now. Um, these <clears throat> uh, my uh, th this is from FY15, so we need to uh, update some of these numbers. But when we look at arts and culture and the impact on the area, there are some already some really impressive numbers in place. And so. Um, so when you look at the organizational expenditures, those would be mainly nonprofit organizations. It doesn't necessarily include businesses. Um, this particular um, uh, study didn't really look, look at that, but if you're looking at um, all, the, all the organizations, what are they actually generating um, in a year? Um, this is what we're looking at, um, the kind of, um, of uh, economic impact. Um, when we look at, at the household income of local residents and uh, artists that are living here, people that are in the creative industries, what are they, you know, wh uh, what's their, their economic impact themselves? How are they spending their own money and how is that, um, that impacting uh, our, our economy here? That's what we're looking at. Our revenues for local government and for state government, how is, it, how is that being contributed to? And then the total economic impact for arts and culture and um, it's mainly looking at arts and culture, not as much as in heritage, but it comes into um, a, a $201.9 billion impact for a, a year. Um, when we look at how, um, you know, there's a lot of free events and free things that are going on around here, but when you look at event-related expenses, 
Um, and that doesn't include the ticket prices uh, for coming in. Uh, it does involve, you know, when, when we have an event, what's being generated as far as, um, as economic impact for this area, so between um, hotel rooms or restaurants or you know, spending at shops and, and um, purchasing of art and, and things, um, we've got $101.4 million uh, of, of revenue and then, you know, and then adding admission onto that, the numbers just go up. And then um, the the average dollar spent per attendee it, the, it was at about the thirty dollar level at the t at that time that the study was um, uh, was um, in place. And so this was kind of uh, from like I said, you know, when I was here eight or nine years ago to now, um, that kind of this um, this statistic really kind of hits the middle of that. So it's all grown since then. There are more uh, more activities happening. And so I'd be really curious to look at, you know, now here in 2020, what are we end up looking at that? And then for non-residents, you can see that it's more than double. So, um, so when we, uh, we look at how we are actually spending our time and working with our community, both here and here, um, how can, you know, I, when I look at COCA and what COCA can do, how can we continue to, um, to improve and to uh, really um, increase those, those particular two um, statistics? So, so really good um, numbers right now for arts and culture, but I do think that it is some, it's a place that we can certainly um, improve and continue to grow. Oh, any questions about that? <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> so um, when I look at what's what's kind of what's feeding that last slide, you know, where are people going? What are they doing? And, and how that that ha and how do they find out about it? And so on and so forth. Um, since uh, these are right now kind of, kind of the main players in our arts and cultural uh, community, and I look at the places and spaces that we are we're, um, we're doing let's work at. So for Kalka itself, as a local arts agency, I'll get into kind of what we we end up doing some of the services that you know Mike kind of uh, and, and uh, Ellen talked about that a little bit. But I'll get a little bit more into what we end up doing. But we are really the conduit right now for um, the, the differences between the business, you know, putting business community, um, all uh, and artists and small businesses, and kind of we kind of put our arms around everyone. We're, we're gather, we gather who these people are, where are they located, um, um, how do you get a hold of them, and we're the ones that are are saying this this, this is who exists out here. And, and trying to get people connected together. Um, and then uh, where is this kind of activity happening too? Our universities here, because of, uh, of uh, locations and the, the buildings that, that they have are, are really the main um, drivers right now of where a lot of arts and culture um, activity is happening. So when you look at, um, at FSU, I don't even have everybody here, but we've got the Museum of Fine Arts, uh, we've got Ruby Diamond Auditorium. We've got Mansi, which is um, I know you're sure that that you under that you know what that is, but it is a um, a main chore choreography school. So we have a lot of, of dancers um, and choreographers and dance companies who are, have national and international reputations are coming through Mansi. Opening nights uh, has a, a main uh, presenting uh, uh, their main presenting uh, organization, and so they put on a lot of concerts not just on campus, but off campus too, um, and our main partner in the area, and that's kind of increasing. Um, the FAMU, the Foster Tattered Galleries, extremely active, and so is Black Archives, in bringing in a lot of, of, of not only lectures, but shows of both local and national. Um, and then they have a theater there that also, um, they've got some very unusual um, uh, productions that come through. Some of them are homegrown, some of them are not. And then uh, TCC also has a gallery and Turner Auditorium <coughs> all in one place. So those are really a lot of the gathering places of where a lot of arts and culture is going on um, in, in amongst the universities. Then uh, Railroad Square is, uh, we're actually, I uh, have a new partnership right now with Railroad Square. Uh, we're working with them on First Fridays. Um, and who's been to a First Friday event? So pretty much everybody in the room, you guess, right? Um, so those First Friday events um, in the tourism uh, lens have been some of the most popular, um, has really gotten a lot of uh, good, um, uh, it, it, they're really popular in the, tour, in the tourism lens. They've got a lot of hits on the, the tourism site. And uh, if you go down there now, you're gonna see that there's also a very wide variety of people 
that are uh, attending those. And Railroad Square uh, wants to continue to up the ante on what's offered there, um, who's coming, and the, the, the myriad kinds of art that, that's available there. And we're, we're working with them on that. And the, the new, I think the new hotel development is going to end up um, being, um, I think there's going to be, an, isn't there an arts kind of uh, emphasis to that too? Is what I mean? Yes. Okay. yes. 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 Um, we're going to feature a lot of the local artists work in the mm -hmm. hotel and um, also host and sponsor all the festivals. Mm -hmm. Like there's an art and jazz festival next weekend. Um, the Hampton Inn is actually the um, sponsor hotel for that and we will have like um, a jazz band playing, um, going kind of like you walk down the first Friday, you can come in and have a drink and hear a little soft jazz band. Um, and then we're housing some of the artists um, for that. But if you haven't been to one of those, check that out next weekend. That's fantastic. And so and th these are the kinds of um, events too that we want to make sure that we're getting on our site and in our calendar. So, because our calendars, um, we have uh, over 13,000 um, unique hits on our calendars. Um, and then we also have over a thousand on our artist roster. And so kind of, um, and then we have um, the social media numbers are there too, where we have, you know, over 9,000 um, likes on our, our, fa our Facebook page and things. So, you know, we want to make sure that, that what we can do, how we can help populate uh, and use our resources to get the word out about this is, is really tremendous. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think about too, how much that can help help businesses out even if you, you haven't, you know, if you haven't been to your hotel yet, going through there, that's an excuse to get there, you right. know, to, to take a look at, at what you have to offer. Right. So, um, and then uh, Clayman Plaza, we also have a, a new partnership with, and they're working right now on actually, um, uh, there are some local arts um, activities that are happening in the plaza, um, kind of uh, here and there, but they are also looking at kind of creating this whole um, arts, um, it's kind of an arts and science walk that would eventually happen. So it would the, the trails that are being worked on right now through Blueprint and uh, the, the arts activity that's going on kind of in the plaza itself, they want to really look at how they can take it and revitalize that, that plaza. They're talking about the concerts at the uh, amphitheater there? Yeah, yeah, well, and then the, the Cascades Park, the amphitheater, um, is also another kind of core place. So right now in, in COCA, um, these are like the main players that, that we're working with um, you know, and we've been continuing to work with, and where a lot of the, the arts and cultural um, activities are, are really being focused on. Um, and when, when, so what we're looking at too, is how we can, through arts and culture, and, and um, connect these places together. So when visitors come into town, um, we can, um, th there's a, a variety of things that they can do, that they can walk to, and, um, and so that we can use arts and culture to connect get together. From get places that we Mm -hmm. Yeah, through pedicabs or through walking <laughs> or, you know, however that would end up happening. So, you know, I think that I have a perspective because I've lived in some different larger places around town, or around the, this, this, the United States, I guess I should say. Um, when I came here, what I, what I love especially about the arts and culture, and the, especially in places and spaces, is that everything's pretty close together. And so if I look at it in my day and I'm gonna plan out my arts and culture itinerary, I can say, if I was in a larger place, I would say, okay, I'm gonna to have to, to choose one thing to do. And then I'm gonna to have to go do that because it's gonna take a while for me to get there or to park or to, like there's just gonna be a bunch of people around. And when I look at what's happening in Tallahassee, I, I consider it much more bite-sized in Indiana County. So you can go to like say two or three things in a day if you really want to. And they can be just, and that, that mindset, I think, is something that I'm really, we're, we're working on in COGA to try to get people to understand like, how you can, you don't have to just choose one thing. You can have a whole itinerary of things that you can do. They're actually fairly close together. And working with a city and county on how do we continue to uh, look at our, uh, our tra uh, transportation offerings, how our public policies work, so that there's um, easy ways for this, these kinds of connections to happen. And that's something that's incredibly unique that this area can really capitalize on. And that I'm hoping that we can continue to move forward on. So, um, 
Kilda itself um, has these particular opportunities that I, I'm not sure that you're even aware of, so let me just go through them um, really quickly. We have um, a public art program right now in airports and city, um, gallery, city hall galleries. Um, we have a public art walk. There's actually a couple of them. And that information is on, is on our website. So if you're looking for uh, things to do or suggestions for uh, visitors to go to, we've got that. We also have some special projects that we're working on right now. For example, we've got, we're working with the airport on something called Music in the Air, which would end up being concerts in the airport uh, at least once a month. And again, that, that is something that as a visitor, as you're coming and going, you can go there. Quite frankly, it's pretty cheap to park at the airport. And if you really wanted to make that a concert venue, you probably could end up doing that. Um, so we're kind of looking at that. So not in the plane, but in the airport. So, uh, not in the air. Not, no, not in the air. No, no, it's not going to be not in the plane. No, <laughs> we, we haven't gotten there yet. So, but I think that would be really cool. Would it be, you know, musicians from, and especially musicians from Tallahassee, like, you know, going to different places and. and What's uh, that, <laughs> so you know, that'd be kind of fun, but no, this would be in the airport itself. Um, and utilizing and kind of uh, putting a vibrancy to the airport that doesn't exist right now. Um, and the, the folks that are running the airport are all over this. But we've got that, that kind of special project going on right now. Um, and uh, so there's, you know, it's just like other ideas where there's a lot of ideas. You, you put out your, uh, you figure out your budgets, you, you figure out whether you're going to have the energy and the, t the time to do all this. Is this something that's, that's a priority? And then you either you park it or you, you move forward with it. So right now we're hoping that the music in the air uh, initiative goes through. Um, we also have uh, we do a fair amount of work in schools. Uh, we, we, we service over 60 schools uh, 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 throughout the, uh, the county. Um, and we have a lot of internships and mentoring. So COCA actually goes into schools and works with teachers and works with students um, on uh, arts education initiatives. And then we also have internships either at COCA or um, through COCA that students can participate in. Um, we also have our grants program. So we've got uh, two grants programs that are continuing on, one that's sunsetting. But we have cultural grants and that helps um, the Art, the arts organizations and, and heritage cultural organizations in this area, it, it helps them with their programming, it gives them some just really solid um, uh, uh, dollars to help them grow their businesses. And we've seen exponentially the, uh, the impact, of especially of consistent funding for those organizations so they can continue to build their resources up, diversify their revenues, um, and they have the timeline uh, to do that. And, the Cultural Tourism Marketing Grant is a specifically, these grants are for um, organizations of all sizes, um, so that there's a pipeline where you can come in as a small business or a small organization and then uh, work your way up. Um, the to Cultural Tourism Marketing Grant is also for organizations of all sizes, but we've especially seen that the, um, um, the uh, uh, real um, improvements in, in, uh, in using this grant in uh, smaller organizations that kind of um, are having a problem trying to get to get through the, the uh, barriers and boundaries of getting into a tourism market. Sometimes it's hard to break in. Um, and so this grant has really helped them um, understand how to think about it, how to market differently, um, kind of challenges them to, to do, uh, do business a little different than, than they have. And that, that has been wonderful to help them out. We have a com uh, cultural facilities um, grant for the non, um, uh, for the locations in town that are not um, necessarily related to uh, universities um, and uh, they uh, will, the, that, that grant was for remodeling, for um, uh, purchases and acquisitions and things like that. And so we're now in the last year, this, we, just ha we just finished our last round of that. Um, but that has really helped those organizations uh, build uh, their capacity to continue to a uh, service community and service visitors better. Who got the most for each of those? Do you think all <coughs> the who got the most for those, each of those categories? Pardon me? Uh, the for the, each of those grant categories, who got, you know, like, who's top for each of those soft grant that's right? Um, well, th this is the oldest program, and so that program's been going on since 2002. The, uh, these two, pro two grant programs are actually fairly new. They're only, I think this one's Four, four years old, and this one is five years old. And every year, everyone has to apply to get those to like the Exactly. Top. So we don't have, a, you know, this uh, Florida actually doesn't have 
a, um, any kind of a program right now for arts, culture, and heritage that just gives like general operating money um, on, a, as a consistent, on a consistent basis, like for three years or five years, and it's every year you have to come back and, and ask. Who are the people applying for the grant? Oh, who are what the people applying for the grant? Yes. So these are organizations that, um, like uh, Lemoyne Arts, uh, Lemoyne Galleries, Wood, um, uh, Goodwood, um, Tallahassee Museum, um, uh, uh, John uh, Riley House Museum. So it's it's pretty much a, a big um, uh, portfolio. And festivals, I guess, he does as well, right? A lot of festivals you get. Um, well, the organizations, you have to be an organization in order to apply for the cultural grant. Yeah, so so if you are a, a standalone festival and not your own organization, then that program doesn't fund that. There are other programs throughout the city and the county that do, through Visit Tallahassee or through the CRA or, or through the park, through Parks and Rec. So these they can do that. Nonprofit only? These are nonprofits only, yes, exactly. And one of the things that came up in all these conversations for the from the last few days is, you know, where, can we can COCA work on trying to get some other um, resources rolling so that if you are a, an independent business, if you are a, uh, if you put on your own, you know, like a one-time festival or one-time event, can you possibly get some um, some resources to help out with that? You know, there, it's been astounding for me to see that all that, like that very first slide about all that economic development and all of that, um, uh, you know, that, that result has been from a lot of volunteer-run organizations or volunteer-run initiatives. You know, so there are some um, festivals that are happening here that are primarily volunteer-run that you know the city and the county really depend on. And so I look at that and, and through COCA's eyes and through a bit through a business sensibility and say, you know, what's the longevity of, of keeping that up? Because we've got a lot of businesses that are depending on volunteer-run events. And so how can we help them have those events, you know, put some infrastructure in those events so that those events become, you know, really solid and reliable um, moving on so that they're just not, not um, volunteer run. We also have professional development. We have workshops and uh, grant reviews and things. And those are some of the services we have. Um, these are free. So and most of the, the services that we have um, between our, our county and our city support, and then we also fundraise on our own. Um, we uh, we can help pay for that, and we most of the, everything that we're doing here is some kind of a free service. And how the workshop we should make them? <laughs> yes, yes. We had a, a, a uh, it was an infographic uh, and design workshop yesterday, and we mainly uh, the folks that were in the room were small business owners, um, or they were. Um, they, they worked with marketing and some of the organizations that we worked with. There are a lot of people that were independents. And that was really encouraging to see. And that's what we want to continue to grow, is the amount of independent um, business owners that, and, and um, or artists that we end up servicing. So like I said, COCA itself, um, this is actually our, our kind of a, the, the services that we offer ourselves. Um, we also have, in addition to what we what I've already mentioned, that there's a cultural plan for. Uh, there's a lot of plans that have cultural kind of components to them through the um, uh, city and the county, and uh, one of them is the, the capital area cultural plan. So that has four different components to it, um, including marketing, uh, tourism, uh, facilities, uh, education and um, an economic development. And so we're working with that plan to implement, um, implement that. And uh, we'll be the ones that will also be looking forward to, uh, to what the next cultural plan is gonna end up being, depending on what arts and culture, how it wants to live out here in this area. Um, like I said, economic development is definitely an area that, Col that COCA is looking at continuing to expand, especially its relationships with the <coughs> community. Bless you. Uh, communications and social media is probably one of the main services that we offer. And uh, as, uh, there's, a, there's a really vibrant calendar that was talked about earlier, this classified section. So every week we have, on Mondays, we launch out a, a newsletter that has all the events for the week and, and um, events coming up. 
Uh, then on Thursdays, that's when our classifieds come in. So if you're looking for an artist, if you if you have uh, like a uh, yeah a call, let's say you want to um, put a concert on in your your venue, or you're just looking for an artist to do some um, a paint a mural for you. Or, or something along that line, you can put a classified in there. If you've got um, an employment opportunity or saying, you know, arts, artists would be really great for, um, for this opportunity that I have, um, you can put a free ad in um, our newsletter. And that, that churns out, like I said, you know, twice a week, we, we offer those kinds of services. We also have very active social media presence, especially on Facebook and on Instagram. And, uh, and then we are the, these content generators. So if you've got something special going on in your hotel or in your business, and it has any kind of an arts, culture, or heritage uh, feel to it, um, tell us about it. Because this might be something that we might want to write about. It's certainly going to be something that we're going to want to promote. Um, we have uh, not only our relationship with tourism, but we've got uh, with Visit Tallahassee, but we are also kind of what we, we call kind of tourism educators. So we end up uh, helping our artists and uh, our organizations look at how they're living out tourism locally and, um, and attracting visitors to the area. Um, helping them figure out what would be other ways that they can do their this better or differently, um, giving them different um, tourism opportunities that they may not be aware of. Um, and like f recently, Visit Tallahassee just launched their new uh, app and their new site. And so we're going to be helping educate our um, our artists and our community, which is a thousand plus, to um, how to use th those tools to to better um, get the word out about the kinds of programming that they that they are. Um, generating. We also have a cultural equity um, statement when we look at how a culture is um, is lived out in this community. We want to make sure that it's hitting every zip code. We want to make sure that that, that the um, the activities are are uh, that, that we promote um, that there's uh, that it's pretty eclectic that we are making sure that we are hitting all different cultures and um, for and all different kinds of um, of uh, activities that are, are going on in our area. And then the advocacy piece too, um, as we talked about earlier in the, the meeting, not just for ourselves, but for our community. So we've been very active in trying to get, uh, recently, just trying to get some more um, resources into the community. They're not city and not county and not, you know, that, but, but outside resources to kind of help um, feed this ecosystem. Is there a COCA app or not yet? A COCA app? We have not gone to a COCA app yet. So I think that, that that figuring out how an app would work with these kinds of services, I think would be really fascinating. And so, you know, could you get your phone out then and say, oh, I really want to look at, you know, um, at, let's say I want to know more about how to market my event. Could, an, could I find that out from an app? Um, we're especially, uh, that might be something we're looking at. We're especially looking at how to modernize what we're doing and um, look at like a distance learning. So all these artists that are living out in uh, more remote areas, can we, uh, through our, uh, our own infrastructure and our own services, be able to, uh, to, to tap into um, what, what we're offering our services and be able to do you know, more remote um, uh, workshops, can we um, do some live streaming of, of the activities that we do? I mean, just some things like that we, that we're not doing right now, we're looking at upping the ante on that website. So. so thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate you <laughs> trudging through the rain and being here, helping us celebrate our, our, uh, our next five years with us. And, uh, and please, I would love to uh, have an opportunity to, to, to meet with you separately and, and talk a little bit more about how COCA can help you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.